Last year, Corsair had a timed exclusive on a new mechanical key switch by Cherry that's made for gamers. Well, that exclusivity is now over. Plus, we've got five nanometers, so stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. I know I'm a little late on these, but it's been a pretty crazy week so far. Either way, I'm here now, so let's just get right into it. Last year, Corsair released their new Rapid Fire mechanical keyboard. But this wasn't just any old keyboard release. Rapid Fire came with a brand new Cherry MX switch, the Silver or Speed Silver switch. The weird thing is that it was a timed exclusive. Well, the exclusivity of it has now ended, which was made apparent by PC Gamer of the numerous keyboards at Computex with the new switch. But what makes the Cherry MX Silver switch so special? Let's just say calling it the Speed Switch is definitely the right name. While the actuation force remains the same between the Silver Switch and the Cherry MX Red, a switch usually used by gamers, the point at which the actuation occurs is only a whopping 1.2 millimeters instead of the 2 millimeters of the Cherry MX Red. That essentially means the force pushing against your finger is the same when pressing, but the actual registration of the key press happens far, far sooner than a Cherry MX Red, which translates into faster actuation times. We're talking a small fraction of a second difference, but when it comes to first person shooters, it can easily be the difference between getting the kill or not. And other companies like Razer have made similar key switches in the past. The only difference is that this is actually made by Cherry and any keyboard manufacturer can use it. As far as the actual type of switch it is, just like the Cherry MX Reds, this is a linear switch, so there's no tactile bump or audible click. Personally, I'm not a fan of MX Reds, but such a difference in actuation does make me want to at least try them out for gaming. Just remember that typing typically isn't all that great on these types of switches. The question, I think, is whether this could be the future of gaming mechanical keyboards. Well, maybe. I think there's a chance that they also release switches with similar distance to actuation, but with a tactile bump and or an audible click. But the one problem with buying a keyboard specifically for gaming is that many users don't just use their PC for that. They need it to be great at typing as well. But who knows, there are definitely people who only use their PC for gaming. Just maybe we'll see a resurgence of the Orb Weaver type keyboards. Who knows. The next bit of news for the day has us heading to IBM for a pretty exciting new development in the future of chip making, with the company unveiling the world's first 5 nanometer chip. I'm not going to get too deep into the intricacies of the new design, but I have a link to a great article in the description for those who are interested. For those who want a quick rundown, it was developed by IBM with collaboration from Samsung and Glofo. The technology to make it happen is somewhat an iteration of the current 3D FinFET design, but instead, it takes the 3D stacked architecture and kind of turns it on its side, made essentially into a sheet. It then uses lithography to essentially etch or pattern in where the components will be. The new design is called GAA FETs or GAFETs? I'm really not sure, but I am sure many of you just want to know what it brings to the table. Well. That part is pretty exciting as well. When compared to 10 nanometer tech, which keep in mind that the Zen and Kaby Lake architectures are both built on a 14 nanometer FinFET design, but when compared to the even smaller 10 nanometer, the new 5 nanometer process offers a 40% boost in performance at the same power. At the same time, they're able to squeeze 30 billion transistors into a 50 square millimeter chip when only 20 billion was possible before. Well, okay, I say only, but both of these technologies are extremely exciting. The mass production of the chips will be quite some time though because of the additional cost, so we should see a good bit on 7 or 10 nanometer long before that happens. Still, it's certainly exciting to at least see the possibility of it for those who love tech. So what do you think about today's news? Are you excited for the even further drop in transistor size? What about the proliferation of the new Cherry Switch? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget about the GamerMail Discord, where we talk hardware, gaming, and everything in between. I'll have that linked in the description. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.